Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you on this channel. I'm Nilesh, and in this video, we'll look at another aspect of linear models, which is robust regression. And in this particular topic, we'll uh, talk about three separate algorithms. One is Ransack, the second one is Thielsen Estimator, and the last one is Huber Regression. And before we get into this, we'll look at what are outliers and what is robustness. So if we look at uh, the plot on the left hand side, we have these orange data points which are fairly together as X is increasing, Y is increasing uh, almost linearly. However, there is this one data point which is in magenta color that's uh, away from the group uh, uh, that is the orange group. And that particular magenta dot is considered as an outlier. And so when we use a linear regression or ordinary least squares to fit to these data points in this particular plot, the fit would be something as shown here in the by the red dotted line. And as you can see, the fit does not go through the orange dot because it is influenced by this magenta dot and magenta data point and therefore it is shifted towards the magenta data point. So to avoid that, these are uh, different algorithm which are robust. What the robust here means is that they are not influenced by the presence of outliers and that's really powerful uh, technique to uh, fit data where there is a lot of noise and on the right hand side we see uh, what we expect these robust algorithms to do they uh, as you can see the outlier is ignored in this case and the fit that we can see now goes through the orange data points and that's a good fit and it's not affected by outliers. So the focus of discussion in, in this video would be to gain some intuition about different ways we can achieve uh, this type of fit in presence of outliers. Here is another example where we have this data set on the left hand side where uh, the orange dot represents the data that are called inliers because they are uh, within they are the data points of interest to which we would like to perform an operation on such as perform a fit and there are these additional data points in the same data set which are these magenta dots up above they are uh, they are not along the curves of those orange dots and therefore those are the outliers that we can see and here the outliers uh, can be in different directions. So here these are the outliers along Y. Uh, on the right hand side, we can see outliers along X. And despite the presence of these outliers, it is possible to perform a really good fit to the data of interest as shown here by this teal color uh, line. And the outliers can be small outliers or they could be much, much larger outliers. And on the left hand side, we can see small outliers where the value of Y is different for the outliers, but it's not uh, too large. However, on the right hand side, the value of Y is uh, uh, more than double. So those are the large outliers. And there are ways in which even in presence of large outlier, we could get a reasonable fit to the data of interest. This is the first algorithm which is called RANSAC. So RAN stands for random, SA stands for sample, and C for consensus. It's a non-deterministic and it's both for linear and non-linear regression. So let's look at an example down here on the plot in the left hand side. We can see as seen before, uh, these are the orange dots, which are actual data points, which are called in inliers. I have a typo there, there should not be an N there. 
and these are outliers which are the magenta dots and as you can see a linear regressor is affected by the outliers and therefore it's shifted towards the outlier however when we use uh, this algorithm ransack algorithm it's not affected by outliers and the pit would be as shown in by the red dotted line that goes through the orange data points and completely uh, seems to ignore the magenta data points now the intuition behind how this algorithm works is uh, as uh, as follows here we have these data points uh, all of these data points what the algorithm does is it picks two data points it fits a line through those two data points and then there is a threshold or a buffer region around the fitted line and then what you want to do is count how many of the data points fall inside that threshold those would be considered as inliers and the rest of the data points would be considered as outliers and as in this particular plot we can see that the green colored data points are the ones that are used to connect this fit which is shown by the red dotted line and with the red dotted line uh, we have this buffer area or the threshold which extends uh, on each either side of that line which is shown by this faint orange color and within this then these are the two three orange data points that are within that particular area and so the number of in layers that we have is five so two green dots and three orange dots that's what we have here and the rest of the eight gray color dots are considered outliers for this run and then in the second iteration a two other data points are considered uh, which is shown here and in this case there are only three in layers and ten outliers and so on you go on uh, through these iterations multiple times and finally uh, let's say we arrive at this particular uh, set fit where we have these two data points to which the line is fitted and in this case we have seven in li in layers and only six outliers so that could be considered as a good fit and as we can see it goes through these uh, data points and these could then be considered as outliers here is a formal algorithm for that so, so we start out with selecting minimum number of samples so in this case because we are in 2d to draw a line we just need two data points so therefore the started with two now if you look read through the uh, scikit-learn docs uh, the way the description says that um, a subsample is selected so the subsample then would also depend on the number of uh, dimensions you have so it could be much larger than two data points that you have selected if we check if the data is valid fit a model check if the model is valid calculate the residuals and then uh, we use threshold the threshold is median absolute deviation and based on that you decide which data points are in layers or outliers and then save the save the model and then iterate through again and whichever model has the highest number of in layers that is the best model and then there are three stopping criteria number of in layers uh, again there is a typo there uh, score and probability once the e either of these three stopping criteria is reached then the model is fit on all the in layers uh, there is another typo and that in the set of final set of in layers is considered as a consensus set and to which then the final model is fit the thiel sen estimator again is a non parametric estimator and uh, according to whatever the breakdown point is 29.3 uh, percent so the number of outliers should be uh, 
maximum of around 30 percent not more than that and the intuition for how this particular algorithm works is let's say we have these data points so the idea is to connect to uh, connect each of these data points by a line and then calculate the slope of that line and uh, once the uh, let's say we are connecting these dots and all the lines are connected then for we get the slope the number of slopes values that we get is um, it would be number of dots so the combinations would be nc2 in this case so n being the number of data points so the combination uh, of all those data points and once we have those slope values for all the data points all the combinations then we take the median value of that slope and that's the slope we want to use to perform the fit and that slope can then also be used to calculate the intercept so a y is equal to mx plus b so that's the equation of line and m would be the slope for that line that we already have so for the two data points we know the value of x and y and so we can plug in the values um, we can plug in the values and then calculate the intercept y so we can plug in the value of x and if we can plug in the value of the mean and sorry not the mean else slope and then the value of y so we get the value of, uh, intercept b out of there and this is example of that so let's say we had those data points in the previous plot at these coordinates so one one two three etc so you calculate the slope for each of those points and when we uh, sort these and look at the median of those points it comes around 0.67 and then uh, for, so for uh, intercept I've tried two different ways one is calculating the intercept for each of them and taking the mean and then or other ways using this me median slope and calculating the intercept and then taking the median of that so these are the two values however the value from the first uh, method this one is closer to what uh, the Thielsen regressor from scikit-learn was able to find. So in this plot, we can see that the blue are the data points, uh, and to that, this dotted line, orange dotted line, that the linear regressor, and as you can see, it does not do a good job. However, we have these green lines, which is the Thielsen regressor, and it does a pretty good job of ignoring the outlier that right here in this particular corner and the line fits through these data points that are in the middle of the plot now i tried to fit a line based on the slope and intercept calculated using this method uh, however it was not um, matching what the thiels and regressor did as we can see here in the blue line it it, it definitely is better than the linear regressor it's closer to the thielsen but it's not exactly it does not exactly line up with what the uh, cited learn uh, thielsen regressor algorithm has output the last one is huber regressor and the objective function for that is given by this equation right here where uh, we are trying to find the optimal values for not only w but also sigma and here uh, we also have this regularization term that is listed shown here in blue so the idea is in this particular uh, equation in the bottom which are the constraints that z represents this uh, value within this parenthesis xw minus yi divided by sigma and so that is used to uh, calculate the values of w and sigma and then perform the fit on the data set and this is also a robust regressor so it's not susceptible to outliers now for code snippet 
uh, this time we have slightly uh, different uh, code snippet that we have been seeing but it does follow the same format that we are used to uh, here we imported a bunch of libraries on numpy then uh, ransack regressor polynomial features make pipeline and uh, also matplotlib and for data set this is uh, a new data set uh, so x train and y train is tiny saddle based on x and here i'm introducing some outliers uh, for y values and the x plot is just uh, to use those values to create the predicted values for plotting purposes and as we have been doing before we initialize the variable reg uh, using a pipeline so i'm um, using polynomial features uh, with degree four and then ransack regressor and performing a fit on the train set and then finally predicting with using the x plot that we have above and if you run this code as is and plot uh, you'll be able to see that despite having the outliers within the plot uh, the ransack regressor does a pretty good job in uh, ex uh, ignore excluding the outliers from the fit that was it for this video i hope in this video you got an intuition about what outliers are what is robustness and what are the three important uh, algorithms in scikit-learn which is ransack deal and send regressor and the uh, huber regressor uh, and how the intuition behind how those uh, uh, algorithms work to perform a robust fit I did not go m in much detail in huber regressor uh, but that uh, i've only shown what the objective function is for that particular method however in the next video when we go through the actual coding part we'll go through the details of uh, each plot and see how each of those methods perform so until then please like share and subscribe i hope to see you all in the next video thank you